We're back again, and we want to share something that is so delightful. We're noticing salt, oil, and sugar-free. The taste sensation of food gets better and better. I had a bite of potato for breakfast the other morning, and usually potato, everybody wants salt or something on potato to make it taste good. Nothing on it out of the air fryer. It was heaven. And I haven't had that experience before. So we love being salt, oil, and sugar-free. It's really making a difference in the way that we enjoy food and that we didn't expect. Yeah, that's been the real surprise. You know, we had heard a lot about SOS-free and Connie wanted to bring her blood pressure down. So it's like, yeah, let's do that. It was all just health oriented. Yes. And uh, we've been so surprised at what has happened to our enjoyment of the food. What's happened in our experience of the taste of the food. Like um, sometimes for a quick dinner, that's usually a lighter meal for us. I'll just put some frozen peas and corn and maybe some frozen cauliflower in a pot and heat it, you know, thaw it and get it warm and have that. When I first started doing that years ago, our go-to was olive oil and umeboshi vinegar. Very you know, salty. Yeah, which, me is uh, very salty. Yeah, so it added the salt and the oil. Right. And um, so we dialed that back quite a while ago, but going SOS free, I mean, it's eliminated any use of that or even close to that. And I now do the same dish without umi and olive oil, without anything on it, nothing on it, which seems so completely unthinkable a couple of yeah. years ago. Yeah. You've got to put something on. I mean, this is just peas and corn. You've got to put something on it to taste good, right? So what we're realizing about this, the word good in the phrase taste good <laughs> is about dopamine. The mind puts the idea of good together because there's a good feeling when there's a hit of dopamine. And it doesn't have anything to do with the taste, actually. It's how much dopamine was just generated. <laughs> and so it's so interesting. Now, the other night, I had this dish for dinner, and I could not believe how delicious it was. So much more delicious than when I used to have it with the umi and olive oil. Yeah, it's surprising. It's really surprising. Yeah, our taste buds change. That's what happens. And we begin to be sensitive to the good, mm -hmm. wonderful taste that food has as our taste buds get cleaner. And what I see now is salt just dampens the flavor. It doesn't enhance it. And we're taught, oh, you can't do it without salt. Yeah, so it's interesting. The salt dampens the flavor, but the salt produces dopamine. Yeah. So we say this tastes better with more salt because there's more dopamine, but we're not even tasting the food now. That, yeah, it's interesting to see. So we came across this uh, short segment of a talk that Dr. Frank Sabatino gave on Chef AJ's uh, Truth About Weight Loss Summit that we really like. So we're gonna share that with you. And uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. And that comes into the relationship to SOS food and addiction. And this is an important piece. When I say SOS for people that are not aware of it, these are foods that are high and contained with salt, oil, and sugar. And we're going to be recommending a dietary plan that's not only plant exclusive, but really, you know, SOS free. But understand the nature of this food panel, because this is something that had its heyday as early as the mid part of the 20th century. And what what was doing at that time is that in the food processing industries, as they were developing, they were they found, and one of the big proponents of this was a very famous, what's called the psychophysicist Howard Moskowitz, who worked for Campbell's and he worked for Kraft and he worked for General Mills and he worked for some of these big food corporations. And they were experimenting at that time with calorie density. They were increasing the density of foods 
and finding that really Goldilocks place where just enough salt, sugar, and richness with oil and fat would create what they called back then the bliss point. And I love this phrase, the bliss point, because it was that place where there was enough bliss and pleasure in the consumer that it made them feel the most satisfied and the most pleasure from this combination of foods. And of course, what they then did is took this high calorie density, this satiety and pleasure created by just the right mix of salt, oil, and sugar, and then added one thing to really take it over the edge, and that was crunchiness. And now they created the entire market of craveable foods, whether that's chips, whether that's sweetened, crunchy breakfast cereals, uh, donuts, cookies, whatever. But understand that this had an entire place in the entire marketing evolution in countries like the United States. And it was based and understand, look at that bliss point. We've talked about the reward cascade. So they knew it created the state of bliss. Now, why? Because what we now know is that these foods especially when you're loading up this hyper palatability with salt, oil, and sugar, they create a massive serotonin and dopamine surge. If you go back to my slides, a few slides back, you'll remember that in the brain reward cascade, it started with serotonin and it kind of ended with dopamine. So here we see these high dense foods with their salt, oil, and sugar, creating and mimicking a dopamine surge like you would see with the greatest pleasure in food, in sex, in alcohol, in drugs. And over time, as you increase this more and more in the habit of doing this, you're tricking the brain into a survival need. You're tricking the brain into believing and feeling that without this incredible surge on an ongoing basis, you cannot survive. So by, in, by investing this bliss point into your life and overstimulating these foods, they lay the groundwork for a very high level of dopamine and serotonin release, which you get used to. So now imagine that as I'm creating that high level your body does something in the sense of trying to adapt to that. And the way it adapts to that, it believes that it's overproducing dopamine and serotonin on its own. So it actually feeds back and gives your brain the signal that it needs to produce less serotonin. And not only that, on the receptors that attach, where serotonin and dopamine attach, it'll actually decrease the number of those little docking stations. So over time, what happens is from this excessive stimulation, there can be uh, the underlying foundation of the loss of pleasure. So now imagine that I have a lower dopamine production by the brain. I have less places for it to attach, which means I have less underlying potential for pleasure. And now I have someone who's been used to this massive surge of dopamine and serotonin, and I automatically just take it away. Well, what do you think is going to happen? There's going to be such a tremendous loss of pleasure that there will be an incredible increased craving and a period of withdrawal until the body can catch up and begin to make the amount of dopamine it needs again. So understand how insidious this is. The food processing industries created just the right blend of salt, oil, sugar, and crunchiness to create a bliss point that would allow you to overstimulate serotonin and dopamine, tricking the brain into believing that these particular foods are necessary for survival because we want sugar, we need sugar, we need sugar to survive, we need food to survive. But the underlying effect of overstimulating serotonin and dopamine is that the body stops producing less of its own. It stops producing even the receptors that attach to it. And now if I immediately abruptly withdraw that sugar, I have such a huge loss of pleasure and such an increased craving and withdrawal. So we want to understand that there, to really to deal with optimal weight, less cravings and establish a new bliss point, because we want to be able to establish that feel good sense from eating in a more healthier way. We deal with the idea of low calorie density and high nutrient density. And just briefly, because I don't want to spend a lot of time. I know other people will be talking about it, but just understand that when we look at fruits non-starchy vegetables and all the starchy veggies, including potatoes, oatmeal, whole grains, bean, lentils. We're looking at foods that are somewhere between 100 and 650 to 700 calories a pound. 
What we've now discovered and what's come out of all the work even on cancer is that if your goal is to maintain better weight and better health and even reducing cancer risk, we want 90% plus of that diet to come from food that are less than 600 calories per pound. And you'll notice as we go through here in yellow, the breads, the pastas and all of that go up to almost 1400, sugar, honey and all of that, 1200 to 1800 cereals, chips, all of that stuff, again, between 1,500 and 2,000, nuts and seeds, 2,400 to 3,200. Now, we know that there's a lot of nutrient value in nuts and seeds. So when we recommend them, we're only recommending an ounce in a day. We're looking at this amount of calories per pound. So we're looking at an ounce to two, the amount that you could put in the palm of your hand. And then finally, if you look at oils, 4,000 calories a pound, which have no place in the diet. There is no animal in nature that isolates the pure fat from its food chain, puts it in big bottles of liquid fat, and then pours it on everything. And when you're taking oil out of food, you're leaving behind what? Well, you're leaving behind fiber and other nutrients. So we recommend having oil only in the foods in which it exists, which of course are all of the veggies, all of the grains, and all of that, including small amounts of avocado and nuts and seeds if you do those. And then uh, getting the bulk of your diet from the fruits, not starchy veggies, and all the starchy veggies. And the truth is, because these foods are so high in fiber, and if you make fruit your sweet, that needs to be fundamental to this eating plan, you will find that not only will you have optimal weight, but because there's such a satiety effect with high fiber, and also the fact that this diet has the highest nutrient density, so it's giving you the biggest bang for your buck, not only giving you low calorie density, but all of these nutrients, it will allow you to eliminate cravings. And it will, again, over time, allow you to establish a new bliss point, a satisfaction where you'll get to this place where, you know, you eat that mango or you eat that persimmon, which we have in season now, and it takes you over the top. You don't need those super palatable bliss point foods that have been tricking your brain and damaging you across time. So from the standpoint of eating, there is no other way, in my opinion, to counter the artificial bliss point that has been imposed on this culture without availing you of an SOS-free plant-exclusive eating plan. It is going to be the, it's not some eating plan, it's really the only eating plan from my standpoint. Okay, we're back. What did you think? I I just found that so fascinating. I loved his historical perspective that back in the 70s, the food industry, people in the food industry got together to find what they found, what they call the bliss point. The combination of salt, oil, and sugar plus crunchy nuts that will produce the most dopamine for the least amount of food. <laughs> So that we uh, we trick the body into thinking it's not producing enough, so it lowers its natural production, dopamine and serotonin. So then, when we eat food that doesn't have these high levels of salt, oil, sugar, and crunchiness, our bodies go, "That's not very satisfying. Where's the good stuff?" <laughs> and we're just drawn back to these foods that produce the good tastes. Uh, so to speak, from the high of dopamine and serotonin uh, and don't produce the high nutrient dense qualities, you know, the nutrients our bodies need to be healthy and thrive. And that's the reason we have an obesity epidemic today, an overweight mm -hmm. obesity epidemic in North America. It's all these processed foods that we want that dopamine hit from that really are destructive to our mm -hmm. health and to the body. Yeah, so uh, what we were talking about before the video in terms of our taste buds changing, uh, that's just the, the result of the body recalibrating to lower doses of salt, oil, and sugar, plus crunchiness that produces the dopamine. So now it doesn't take much the body responds very quickly to low levels of salt, oil, and sugar, which are the natural ingredients. When we don't add salt to our food, it doesn't mean we don't get salt in our bodies. There's salt in all the foods. 
but we don't add the extra. And then our bodies become very sensitive to those normal levels of salt, oil, and sugar, natural sugars, not the refined sugars that are in the whole foods. And suddenly we're very satisfied. We get enough dopamine and serotonin to go, wow, that's really good. And we taste all the flavor now too. It's not hidden by the other ingredients. When you say there's salt in vegetables, what do you mean? Well, salt is, uh, table salt is sodium chloride. Yeah. So we need the sodium uh, uh, because it's real important in terms of keeping what they call the sodium potassium pump active in the cells. It, it allows nutrients in and waste mat matter out. So you've got to keep your sodium and, and potassium coming in. Salt is basically minerals. And so all foods, natural whole foods, have plenty of minerals in them. And those are the natural salts, just like an apple has natural sugars in it, but it's not that refined sugar, that sucrose of yeah. table sugar. So, and the whole food fats, you know, nuts and seeds, avocado, uh, these are high quantities of the natural fats. But carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, yeah. they all have natural fat too. Yeah. And uh, it's what our bodies thrive with. Yeah, we can trust nature. Mm. All we have to do is eat whole food, plant based, and try SOS free. Give yourself two weeks to really begin to sense. And then as time goes on, your experience with food is more delicious. It's really, it's amazing. Yeah, and, and so if you have an issue with cravings for food, you might try the SOS free approach because those cravings are often uh, created by this maladjusted serotonin dopamine uh, levels that we're looking for in food. And when we come back to just natural foods, the cravings naturally disappear. Yeah, recipe. <laughs> it's so good. It's called peppered kale potatoes. It's kale, potatoes, mushrooms, onion, garlic, and it is so delicious. It's one pot meal, and we added extra vegetables on the side because we like to eat a lot of veggies at every meal. But I think you'll enjoy it. It's worth trying. It doesn't take much time to prepare. Okay, that's it for now. We'll see you next week.